Hello, and once again, welcome to our daily reflection. Now, this morning's reading is taken from Luke's Gospel. It's from chapter 12, and it's verses 49 to 59. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time. Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Are you going with your adversary to the magistrate? Well, try hard to be reconciled to him on the way, or he may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you in prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Now this week's summer solstice, the longest day of the year, is always a special time for anyone who, like me, loves gardening. All that extra light and warmth makes this the optimal growing season, giving our precious plants a chance to soak up all that extra energy and look their very best. Unfortunately though, it's also the optimal growing time for something else. Weeds. Those unwelcome plants that seem to spring back up almost as soon as we've got down on our knees and pulled them out. Weeds offend and oppose almost everything that we gardeners hold dear and try to cultivate in our plots. And I think that in that respect, Weeds are very much like the words that Jesus had to say in this morning's reading. What on earth does he mean by saying that he's come to bring division rather than peace? Why is he turning our view of what we thought he stood for on its head like he's doing here in this reading? Well, the fact is that sometimes we all need a wake up call a call to shake us out of our comfort and complacency. And I think that's exactly what Jesus was doing for his disciples here, preparing them for what the future would hold. To use another gardening analogy, it wasn't all going to be a bedded roses for them and robust and deeply rooted weeds would soon be springing up at every opportunity to oppose and deny the good news that Jesus had brought to earth. The crowds that had welcomed him back into their city would quickly turn against him when they realised that the type of kingdom he wished to establish was quite unlike the one that they had in mind. Following his death and resurrection, his disciples would argue amongst themselves and become divided over the question of whether non-Jewish people should be accepted as full members of the early church. And division and conflict would continue to spring up throughout the ages as people disagreed and fought battles over the detail of how to interpret the gospel. Factions would arise with each side becoming more polarised in their views and more intolerant of any dissenting voices. It all does sound very familiar for life in general today, doesn't it, I'm afraid? 
intolerance abounds. Heated arguments range around issues like politics, gender and race, and nations fight in bloody conflict. So surely, now is the time to pause and just remind ourselves of the teaching that Jesus gave to his disciples at the Last Supper, when he said, As I have loved you, so you must love one another. You must love one another. And in his letter to the Romans, St. Paul tells us exactly what that Christian love should look like and how all-encompassing it should be. Now, this is what he says. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, and be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn and live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And if it is possible, as far it depends as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And so, on that note, I'd just like to leave you with this prayer. Give us, Lord, a vision of the world as your love would make it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where the benefits of civilised life are shared and everyone can enjoy them. A world where different races, nations and cultures live in tolerance and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. And give us, Lord, the inspiration and courage to share in the task of building that world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.